R E C Y C L E Recycle. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another video. So, Chris and I decided that we were going to sit down today and talk about easy ways that you can reduce your waste and easy ways that we have been trying to reduce our waste as well. So going along with the video that we did, I think it's two weeks ago now, we talked about how to properly store your produce in order to reduce food waste. But we also thought it would be important for us to talk about waste in general um, in different, different areas of our life and how we're making small changes to hopefully reduce the waste um, that we produce every single day. And since it is Earth Month, we thought this would be the perfect opportunity to really reflect on the waste we've been producing and how we really live our lives. So we've been taking inventory of what we do and how we can kind of better ourselves and make small changes to reduce our waste uh, daily. So it's been, it's been a learning process and mm -hmm. I gotta be the first to admit that we are far from zero waste or low waste, but I can happily say we are making changes every day to really lower our impact that we're having on this planet. So. Yeah, definitely. I think it's important to realize that even if you're making small changes, you're still making changes and you can applaud yourself for those. You don't need to make a huge lifestyle change overnight in order for it to count. You don't need to be completely zero waste in order for it to count, you know? Um, I think that as a society, all the small changes will add up and will definitely make an impact on our environment. And hopefully in the future, a lot of these tips will be more mainstream and it'll be followed by a majority of the population. And for this video, we're actually partnering up with Earth Hero. If you haven't heard of Earth Hero, it's an online marketplace for everything eco-friendly and sustainable. They have thousands of products that you can search through and choose from. And what's cool is they do all of the research behind all the products and all the brands so you know that everything is truly sustainable and eco-friendly. And what's cool about Earth Hero is they have the option to filter the products that you choose based on packaging. So if you wanted to avoid plastic or have a package or a product that is minimally packaged, uh, you'd be able to easily filter that out on their website just so it's more sustainable and you can mm -hmm. really choose products that resonate with your beliefs and your the impact lifestyle. you want to have on the environment. Yeah, and they have 80 plus sustainability logos that they assign to their products. So you can just know exactly what features or characteristics that product or that brand holds. Um, so like, just like Chris was saying, you can filter the things so they align with your lifestyle. And I think that's really cool because going through and finding eco-friendly sustainable products, it was always confusing for me because there were so many different brands, so many different websites. I didn't know what was better, what to choose, and all of that. And they have like everything on the website laid out for you. And there's thousands of things you can choose from. So we actually got some products from them that we are going to be featuring throughout the video. We'll share them with you guys and we'll talk about them once we talk about that uh, topic, I guess. And we also have a discount code if you want to check them out. We'll link it down below. We're really impressed with this website, mm -hmm. so we're excited for you guys to check it out yeah, also. You guys can get 15% off anything on their website. So for this video, we wanted to consult an expert and make sure that we were giving you guys proper information and just making the changes properly and I guess mo most sustainably. So we talked to our friend Marina, if you guys want to check her out. Her handle will be right here on Instagram, Eco Goddess, and she lives a zero waste lifestyle. And we actually met her when we went to Aruba last year. And she's just so inspiring, she's so positive, and she makes everything really approachable. So we sat down, we had a discussion with her um, because this is still a learning process for us and we're still making these changes. So one of the first things that we learned about when we started doing our research about reducing our waste is the five R's of waste management. Um, but after talking to Marina, she actually dubbed a sixth R. So these R's are in order based on and what you should, a yeah, good point. Priority. Yeah, priority. So the first R is refuse. So refusing waste, not bringing more waste into your home. Reduce, reduce what you need. So if we all can just go over our priorities and we can reduce our waste just by not wanting all these unnecessary things. Reuse is basically reusing things that you already have. Repurpose, so this is taking things that would be waste but repurposing them into something of use around your home. Okay, the next thing is rot. So rot just refers to composting. And then lastly, is recycling. So a lot of people think recycling's the, the best top. thing you can do, but in reality it is 
one of the last things that we want to be doing. Now we're going to get into the 25 ways that you can reduce your waste. It's a lot of ways. It's a lot of ways. <laughs> Number one! <laughs> like we were saying before, refuse. So just don't take any unnecessary trash home. Um, Single-use plastics, flyers, um, whatever you don't need to take home, don't take it home. So number two <laughs> is to reduce your junk mail consumption. Uh, there are ways to do this that we didn't even know existed. So there's eco ecocycle.com or .org. We'll okay. link it down below and then catalog choice. Um, we'll link both of them down below and essentially you can just opt out for having any junk mail sent your way. Number three, which I feel like is a very common, common practice now is to bring your own bags to the grocery store. So we're talking both grocery bags and produce bags. Smart for you to know the weight of the produce bag so that the, um, the checkout person can tear it so you don't have to pay extra money for the weight of your bag. So the carbon footprint of paper bags is actually larger than that of plastic bags. Paper production uses trees that could instead be absorbing carbon dioxide. It releases more greenhouse gases, takes three times the amount of water to produce, and results in 50, 50 times more water pollutants. That's insane. That really is. Number four is going paperless. So whether you get bills for your cable or internet or cut of cards, uh, bank statements, anything like that. Uh, mm -hmm. If they're sent through the mail, you can just go online and opt in to get them sent to you digitally. You can also opt to get concert tickets, plane tickets, train tickets, um, electronically. All, yep, all digitally. And then also books and newspapers, they um, exist in digital versions now and also audiobooks exist. And if you can opt for an electronic version, it is ideal. So number five is investing in higher quality items. And I know this might not be accessible or realistic for some people, but what we've found is if you spend a little bit more money up front to get something of nice quality, it'll typically last longer and mm -hmm. you won't have to replace these items uh, again and again if you're buying something of cheap quality. Yeah, so, totally. So an example of this is razors. If you choose a reusable stainless steel razor, apparently those will last you a lifetime. You just have to replace the blade, um, but it's not made of plastic materials and it's more eco-friendly. Another thing is instead of choosing cheap sponges, you can use a towel to wash your dishes or you can get a, an eco-friendly scrubber. Earth Hero has a bunch on their website that you can check out. So the next thing is using kitchen towels instead of paper towels. So a statistic I read online is that in North America alone, 51,000 trees are cut down every single day for paper towel usage alone. And if you can use kitchen towels instead of paper towels, it reduces your usage I mean, dramatically fully yeah, yeah if you're not going to use paper towels and we use it to clean our kitchen we use it sometimes to clean the floor wipe spills that sort of thing so this is my favorite tip um it's to buy secondhand or or to choose eco-conscious brands to purchase from thrifting is like my life i love thrifting and i actually started a second channel all about thrifting and diying and that sort of thing i'll link it down below if you want to check it out i don't think i've talked about it here and if you do want to purchase new things, you can choose to purchase from eco-conscious brands. Sure. So it's just like voting with your dollar and helping support companies who are making a positive impact on the world. If you go on Earth Hero, they have so many different brands that are doing just that, um, that you can support. And number eight is getting rid of plastic straws and using, opting for reusables. So we have glass straws, stainless steel straws, and even straws with uh, rubber tips. So. This is actually great for people with disabilities and save the turtles, guys. Yeah, seriously, I, I'm sure most of you have seen that viral video where the straw was stuck in the turtle's nose. It was getting pulled out, it was the saddest thing. And just thinking about how that, that's just one turtle. I don't know how many other turtles have been affected. And not even just plastic straws, but plastic in general, it affects wildlife, animals all over the world. It's such an easy thing to swap out, to say no to a plastic straw mm -hmm. or any plastic utensils and, and use a reusable version. Mm -hmm. Number nine is to swap plastic wrap for reusable food wraps. And this brand is... Kala Cloth. Kala Cloth, and this is from Earth Hero. You just use this as you would use plastic wrap. You can wrap a bowl, you can wrap like a an avocado half or a fruit. And um, right now it's not sticky, but it'll start to heat up with the heat of your hands and become sticky. So you just need to like press down on whatever you're covering. There are also these things called food huggers, I believe, and they are basically silicone covers for food and you just tightly pull them over and they also work in place of plastic wrap. And number 10 is getting rid of Ziploc bags and using silicone bags instead. So these are stasher bags. Uh, we also got these on Earth Hero, or some of them at least. 
Um, and these are great for sandwiches, storing food items. Um, it's just anything you'd put in a Ziploc bag, you mm -hmm. can put in here. These are plastic-free, hypoallergenic, and um, they're awesome. We have tried a bunch of different reusable bags, and Stasher is definitely my favorite brand and option, and it comes in different colors, so that's fun. Super cool. <laughs> Number 11 is opting for a silicone baking mat. If you go through a lot of foil and um, parchment paper, it's very wasteful. So what you can actually opt for it is a silicone um, baking mat, which is reusable, it's oven safe, of course, and um, it's eco-friendly. So number 12 for all of our coffee-loving friends, myself included, there are a lot of stores. Uh, for instance, we have New Seasons out here where you can buy coffee in bulk. So I think Winco actually you can buy coffee in bulk also, so check your stores. Um, basically, you're able to bring a reusable container, fill your own coffee up. Whole or ground. Whole or ground. And then in terms of how you brew your coffee at home, I think a French press is the most eco-friendly option because you don't need to use um, any plastic or coffee filters, that sort of thing. <clears throat> but coffee filters, I think, are compostable, are they? They're, yep. Yeah, so, yes. I mean, if you have a compost, you can totally do that. Um, but if you're looking for a new method to brew your coffee, I definitely recommend French pressing your coffee, just so you can avoid plastic and paper and whatever. Um, and we used to use a Keurig, and we always avoided using the little plastic cups, and we had very like a, a reusable uh, cup instead, so basically we would just fill it with our own coffee, mm -hmm. and it would work just the same. And we compost the grounds that yeah. it produces, so. Number 13 is to BYO, bring your own containers and utensils. If you go out to eat, instead of getting your to-go food or your leftovers in their containers, you can actually bring your own container and put it in there. So that way you're wasting less and um, it's a more eco option. And for hot bars, we like to bring two of the same container, keep one empty so that they can tear one container and just weigh the other with no problem. Uh, to not get any single-use plastic um, utensils or straws or even napkins if you can. You bring your own utensils as well, keep them in your purse. Uh, we keep some in our car. So we have these from Earth Hero. It's just a utensil set. Really um, nice. So these are a bamboo option. I like bamboo because it's more lightweight. But if you don't want to purchase a utensil set, you can actually just get your utensils from home, wrap them in a towel, and bring that in your bag like so. And the good, the good part of this option is you have a towel to use too. So not only do containers refer to food, but they also refer to beverages. So for example, if you go to a coffee shop, a simple swap is bringing your own cup. And if you get one of these stainless steel tumblers that we have, the drinks actually stay warmer longer, which is a plus. You can even bring your cup to a place like Jamba Juice um, to get a smoothie and they'll fill it up for you. Just got a Jamba Juice and they actually give you a discount if you bring your own container. It pays to be lower waste. Yeah, definitely. Bring your own water bottle. So instead of picking up a plastic water bottle when you are out and about, you can bring your own water in your own container. And like I was mentioning about the tumblers, these containers actually keep the water colder longer if you like cold water. If you guys want to check this out, I'll link it down below. Number 14, um, like we were talking about earlier with the six R's, is repurpose. So we picked up some plants from our local nursery and we usually buy pots at like Target, Home Depot, Ikea, whatever, even sometimes at, um, at thrift stores. But pots, pots can get expensive and we realized we had so many cans that we've been using. We usually just recycled the cans, but we thought that it would be better to repurpose the cans and now we're going to use them as little pots. They look really cute. And also instead of buying fancy jars at the store, we like to just repurpose our um, pasta jars or any sort of glass jar that you purchase from the store. We just clean it out, remove the label as best as possible and you're good to go. So the next thing is recycle. And this is actually the last R on the six R's list. So mm -hmm. basically, I, we just had it ingrained in our minds that recycling was the be best option. But I think that it's important for people to understand how to recycle in order to make the best out of recycling, I guess. And it can get a little bit complicated. Yeah, so I wrote down um, a bunch of different uh, ideas here I'm gonna read off to you because I don't know off the top of my head. So there are a few things that you can do to improve your recycling. The first off is to remove caps from bottles and to like take out as much liquid as you can. The caps and the little ring on water bottles are not recyclable, which I just learned. So it's best for you to remove those before you 
put your bottle into the recycling bin. And then it's best practice to remove all food and wash out the container pretty well before discarding it. The next thing is to just find out what plastic your recycling center actually um, recycles. So just giving your recycling center a quick call or looking online, you can get full details on that. And sometimes they'll even, I, I know our township uh, has an app that you can look at and mm -hmm. it'll tell you what things you can and can't recycle. Learn how to recycle paper. So I learned that shredded paper is not actually not easily recyclable because it could get tangled in the machines or whatever. So whole pieces of paper are better or like larger pieces of paper are better. And if you do have shredded paper, you can actually put that into your compost, which is what we started doing um, instead of putting in our recycling bin. You can't recycle plastic bags like grocery bags. So just keep that in mind. When in doubt, just look online, call your recycling center so that you know if you're practices are good. So number 16 is composting. Uh, we always thought this would be really uh, a difficult task and it always just seemed very daunting, but we made one recently and it was super easy um, and we're so excited the way, the way it turned out. So we have this little compost bin that we keep in the freezer. Uh, we got this on Earth Hero also. And essentially any food scraps that we have, um, we'll put them in here and then once this thing gets full, we'll just dump it outside in into the big compost bin. bin. So yeah, love this thing. Yeah, it's, it's actually an easier option. Instead of us having to go out to our compost every single day after we cook, after we eat, we just put them in there in the freezer so it doesn't smell, it doesn't attract um, bugs. And then once it's full, we can just make one trip to the compost. All right, so we're gonna be making a compost bin out of a plastic bin that we had uh, lying around. Uh, you can make a compost out of almost anything, including like a garbage can. Um, you can buy a compost if you wanted to. Uh, you can also make them out of wood, out of pallets, and things of that sort. So there are tons of options if you look online, but it's really easy to do. So we're going to start out by drilling some holes. The idea with that is to create some airflow and some aeration, so when you put in all of the compostable all right. matter, it's all well ventilated and is able to break down uh, more easily. So we're going to start drilling. <laughs> I hate this thing. It's such a piece of we are in the process of figuring out this compost and doing some research just to figure out how to do this. And so we are going over like the browns and greens. If you just if you just Google browns and greens for compost on Google, um, you can find a list of like what to include and what not to include. There's so many videos and researchers online that we were able to figure it out and. And you can too. And you can too. So let's go. Yeah. We got a lot of dry leaves over here by our hose. We're gonna get. Look at this guy, my composter. <laughs> so you wanna make sure you take all your stickers and stuff off the produce that you get. Woo. Don't put it in the bin. <laughs> we added a layer of leaves as a base. You can also put cardboard, things of that sort. Paper. Paper. Yeah. And Check then the list. We put a layer of dirt, and now we're just gonna add in our food scraps. There you go, produce, coffee grounds. We actually ended up having two bags. There are composting services, like for example in our area, there's a composting service that we can sign up for where they'll come and pick up food, or there are, I know there are composting facilities in different areas we can drop off your compost. Um, my friend told me that if you go to a farmer's market, you could talk to the farmers and see if they'll take your compost and you can just bring that to them on the weekends, which definitely helpful for the farmer. It's free compost for them and it's a good way for you to put your uh, food scraps to use. Number 17 is adopting a vegan lifestyle and a plant-based diet. So what a lot of people don't realize is that a vegan diet is actually more eco-conscious, eco-friendly, more sustainable than an omnivorous diet and that factory farming is actually destroying our environment. So animal agriculture is responsible for 91% of Amazon destruction, which is pretty insane. And to put that into context, it's about one to two acres of rainforest that are cleared every second. Global greenhouse gas emissions are contributed 51% due to livestock and their byproducts compared to just 13% from transportation, including all road, rail, and air, which is also pretty staggering. Waste from a farm of just 2,500 dairy cows is equivalent to waste from a city of 411,000 people. Domestic water use is only 5%, but animal agriculture contributes to 55% of water use. Those are just a, sm a small few statistics um, that can point out that animal agriculture is not sustainable and not eco-friendly. 
We'll link all of the information down below. You guys can check out um, Cowspiracy, which is a good documentary that talks about um, the environmental impact of factory farming. Um, but I just think that making small changes in terms of diet will make a huge impact. I know the world is not vegan, but I definitely think that telling people about the environmental impact of their diet can help people make a change. Even if they're eating a couple of vegan meals a week, it'll still make a difference. Absolutely. Number 18 is DIY whatever you can. So do it yourself, make it yourself, whatever you can. So this can refer to decor, clothing, like I was mentioning before, you can pick up stuff at a secondhand shop and flip it to make it a little more uh, modern, a little nicer, a little more your style, but just by simply giving it a coat of paint or adding some accessories to it, whatever it may be. Another thing is you can actually make your own cleaning products at home. This will save money and it's more eco-friendly and you can avoid any harsh chemicals in your house. We have a DIY cleaning spray on our, our website that you can check out, I'll link it down below. Super easy to make and it's made from simple ingredients. And then number 19 is being able to cook at home and planning out your own meals. Uh, when you eat out, especially when you take things to go, it creates a lot of waste. Mm -hmm. um, and just being able to cook at home, store everything in reusable containers, um, it just reduces environmental impact all around. Number 20 is using environmentally friendly period products. So I actually switched to using a menstrual cup, which is an alternative to pads and tampons. It is definitely a more environmentally friendly option and it's been working really well for me. I'm really happy with it. And then another option is using She Thinks underwear or period panties, which I've seen a lot of people use in conjunction with the period cups or on their own. And it's an alternative to tampons and pads so that you can reuse the um, She Thinks underwear and then you can just wash them and it's more eco-friendly. So number 21 is reducing tea bags and opting for a loose leaf tea option instead. Uh, like we mentioned with coffee, you can get tea in bulk also. Um, mm -hmm. And being able to do that, you can compost the tea grounds and everything as well. And some tea bags are made of plastic, some aren't, so you're just gonna have to check the brand. Uh, but another thing to think about is you're putting plastic in like boiling water, basically consuming microplastics there. So that's another reason why we should just avoid it altogether. You can get sustainable, uh, reusable tea strainers. Mm -hmm. So we have like a little pineapple one. Yeah. Um, and basically it works just the same as a tea bag. It's just a reusable option, which is yeah. great. Yeah, and some tea bags are compostable, um, but again, you're just gonna have to check the information and the materials that they're made out of. Um, but just choosing tea in bulk is a better option. Number 22 is picking up trash wherever you go and plogging, if you will. So basically it's picking up trash while jogging. Um, but in general, if we see trash scattered about, it's best to pick it up and put it in a more contained environment into the trash as opposed to just on the floor. It can fall into the drains, it can end up in the ocean, it can end up killing animals. It's better that they're there in a more contained environment as opposed to on the streets. Number 23 is to store your food and produce properly to prolong the life of the food. So we actually made a video and we have a blog post all about how to store your produce properly to prolong the life because if you're doing that, then your food will last longer, you'll be able to consume it and waste less. So we'll link that we'll down link below. That, yeah. Check it out. So number 24 is a fun one uh, and it's really easy to use just in everyday life. Uh, instead of using Google for a search engine, uh, Ecosia is a website that's basically just like Google, but for every search that you do, they plant trees. Um, and help the environment by doing so. So yeah. just opt to use that instead. Uh, yeah. That's something we actually are starting to get into the habit of using. Um, but it's a great website and it's just a super easy way to help plant trees, so. It's not necessarily an option to reduce waste, but it's an option to like give to the environment and make the environment stronger and happier and plant trees, you know, so. Um, Definitely check it out. Number 25 is just our end thoughts. So with this, I just wanted to share that I think it's important for all of us as a society to just take a step back, reevaluate our lifestyles, reevaluate our habits, um, and just try to reduce the waste that we are producing and also to just try and realize what we need and don't need. And I feel like that's a really good way to kind of open your eyes to living a more eco-friendly life. And this is something I didn't do for a very long time. So when I did start to take a mental inventory of what I was doing, how much waste I was producing, 
it was pretty eye-opening. So yeah. just being able to take these small steps is, it's made a huge impact already. Totally. So. And I know that was a lot. Thank you for making it this far, if you're still here. Thank you for putting up with our <laughs> shitty lighting today. It's been all over the place, but we did our best. We hope you learned something. We've definitely been learning so much uh, through this journey of reducing our waste mm -hmm. and becoming uh, more eco-friendly and sustainable. Um, I just, I think that in this day and age, there's so much information about sustainability and eco-friendly lifestyles and zero waste out there that we all can learn so much more than we could like 10 years ago. Sorry, I just hit you on the head. <laughs> um, so I just think that if we take like 10 minutes out of our day, just, just do some research online and just to learn more about what the heck is going on and how much waste we're producing, like we can really make an impact. Does that Absolutely. make sense? <laughs> it does. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll have a new recipe video coming out soon, but I hope you guys enjoyed this sit down informational type educational type video. Happy Earth Day, Happy Earth Month. Happy Earth Day. <laughs> Oh, it's Earth Day. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Bye.